Here on Caitlin, eyes are on the lead. I'm just very lucky to be in this moment. A WNBA record, 19 assists. At this point, continue to be myself, and I think a lot of good will come from that. So coming out of college, expectations, they were sky high for Caitlin Clark and the Fever. But to start the season, they had a little bit of a rough go of it. They lost their first five games. They ended up one and eight through their first nine games. And during that first month, the playoffs, they didn't feel realistic at all. Clark, she struggled with turnovers. And the discourse, it was really centered around this just being an adjustment period. But then, Indy entered the Olympic break, 11 and 15 on the year. And then they really turned it around. They've won seven of their eight since. They clinched a playoff berth for the first time since 20. 16, which, by the way, was the last year of Hall of Famer and franchise icon Tamika Catchings' career. So, Caitlin, she continues to make history. She's the first rookie to win WNBA Player of the Month since the awards inception in 2010. And last night, it was no exception. So, the Fever, they were hosting the Sparks in this one. Of course, Tyrese Halliburton, Shanae, pulling up to take in the action He's been consistent. Here. Yeah, he's been showing up. <laughs> Third quarter is we're going to pick this one up. Tied at 55. Clark. Hit Come the on. crossover. What? When you're able to just drag dribble like that back, you gotta. Ugh, that's just hard. It's hard. You gotta send more help. By the way, her 100th three pointer through the season, 34 games, passing Ryan Howard for the fewest career games to reach 100 points. And then just a couple seconds. In transition, later. she is so fast, deceptively fast. That's why they are able to score these big numbers because they do their damage in transition. Right here, Clark. Quick five points for Clark. Fever lead 66. Ooh, 64. tough one. A little push off to three. And then Fever pushing their lead again. So let's go ahead, Shanae, here to the fourth quarter. Early fourth, the Fever up. Clark dribbles behind the back, drains the three. It's like pick your po poison, right. but you can't because all of the players are playing well. She finished with four three pointers. And oh, Clark, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> a little dime behind the back to Aaliyah Boston for the fuck up and the foul. I mean, just making phenomenal passes, and then Boston with the finish there. She's fired I up after that I love the energy. One. And then under 30 seconds left to play here. She's one rebound shy of a triple double, and she knows it. This she is knows, actually really just it's really funny if you watch Kelsey Mitchell because she's like looking around like, wait, what's happening? Yeah, I don't know if she knew sure. the memo. <laughs> making sure. Clark gets high fives from her teammates after she secures her second triple double of the season. Take a listen to Clark's reaction post game. Did you know you were one rebound away from your second triple-double? Of course I knew. But somebody had to get the rebound, so A.B. was joking. We always joke about stealing each other's rebounds, so it's funny. I mean, of course she knew. She was hunting that rebound down. 24 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. The Fever win their fifth in a row for the first time since 2015. So Caitlin Clark finished with that triple-double. She just continues her superstar trajectory. She's the only rookie in WNBA history with a triple-double and now has two in her debut campaign. 2024 is the 25th season for the Fever in the W, and Clark is the only player in franchise history to ever get a triple-double. And you no, we had to bring in our girl Shanae to break it all down. What have you seen, Shanae, from Caitlin during this fever turnaround? Look, the hottest team in the WNBA right now is the Indiana Fever. Kelsey Mitchell has been balling. Lexi Hall has been an X factor. And that was a great chess move, just getting this lineup with chemistry. But make no mistake, Caitlin Clark is doing things beyond her years. Let me show you how good 22 has been. She's on pace to generate the most points in a season in WNBA history. As for this win streak, though, Caitlin has created 224 points between points scored herself and points assisted. That's almost 45 points per game and the most by any player ever during a five-game win streak. So let's take it to the court so I can show you how she gets it done. First, let's talk about off-ball. This is an Iverson cut over two screeners. Then there's a pin down. Then there's a chase. Then there's a double contest all to get this shot. That is not easy work, but she makes it look like slight work. Now let's go to on-ball when she has the ball in her hands. She's initiating the offense, just able to use her skills, probing, good little uh, quick screen, but then two go with her. Dantas is able to slip to the mid-range to knock down a nice bunny. So she's able to not only score herself, but she's distributing the ball. But last but not least, I mean, y'all, it's, it's what I've said in transition. Once she gets the ball, you have to really sprint back because of plays like this. She's able to draw two. I mean, these are elite advanced type of situations that rookies don't normally do. She just 
had her second triple-double, but don't sleep on her double-doubles. She has had seven games with 20 points and 10 dimes. That's the third most in league history. The Fever are not a matchup that anybody wants to play right now, Malik. Heroic medal round to help Team USA win their fifth straight gold medal. Steph Curry, he agreed to a one-year $62.6 million extension with the Golden State Warriors. That's according to our Woj. Now, Curry is under contract through the 2026-27 season, which leads us to the obvious question that Steph, he was asked on the Today Show. Take a listen. Are you going to retire a Golden State Warrior? I hope so, for sure. I mean, okay. I've been there going into my 16th year. Yeah. And uh, I've always said it's a, it's a goal of mine to, to finish my career uh, you know, with that organization that has seen me go through the ranks and, and uh, accomplish amazing things with you know, Draymond. I know Clay is not with us anymore, but uh, I want to keep winning, obviously. Yes. And I know, you know we, we have a ho hopefully some, some days ahead still doing that, so definitely want to be there. So it sounds like, Cheney, that if the Golden State Warriors are able to keep their heads above water here, Steph is in it for the long haul. But how confident are you that Golden State can do just that? As long as Steph sounds just that confident, I'm cool with the Golden State Warriors' plan to really right. maximize on their prime. Now, the true thing is that the Warriors, they've already done the hard thing. They broke up their core. They broke up the, uh, you know, the, the pieces together that built that dynasty. But they did that for a reason, to be able to have the right pieces for the future, for the next, what was it, the contract? Next three years for Steph Curry. But this is still a team that has a lot of issues, right? They are 15th in defensive rating. They're ninth in offensive rating. Now, they're still number two, I believe, in three-point makes, which yeah. is largely because of Steph and adding Buddy Hill helps to maintaining that consistency in their identity. But they're going to have to find other stars or at least get star-like production from the supporting cast. That has been the hallmark for Golden State. What is it, strength in numbers? Absolutely. Like, this is my one caveat. He was playing in the Olympics. LeBron James had a teammate on that squad. Kevin Durant had a teammate on that squad. When we look at these generational icons that we've experienced the last generation, Steph, it's like, where's his guy? Mm. Who's that go-to? They have to establish whether it's the collective or it's something within the next three years, a player that can really push them back to championship contention. Right, because for many, many years, it was the Splash Brothers. One, two, book it. Now, Clay Thompson is with the Dallas Mavericks. And when you look at this Warriors team as it's currently constructed, it's not hard to see them sort of fighting in that sort of play in range. But because we expect yes. so much of Golden State, <laughs> that somehow doesn't feel good enough. So, Zach, do you think the days of maybe truly, I mean, truly being title contenders are they behind Steph and the Warriors here? Probably. It's going to take a home <laughs> run, a lightning strike, something like the Spurs got with drafting Kawhi Leonard toward the end of Tim Duncan's prime. Mm. Because this is what happens to great legends who stay with one team. You win a lot, and while you're winning a lot, you draft at the bottom of the first rounds here, probably not getting any stars there. And then the core gets old, and it's hard to transition from old to great again while the old guys are still in the league. And that's where the Warriors are. They're a good team. This is a good, deep team in the Western Conference. They could win a round. If things go right, they could even win two rounds. But they're not a contender. And you know what? That can be okay. It's not a reflection of Steph. It's not necessarily a reflection of mismanagement, though they'd surely like to have that James Wiseman pick back. And they'll look for stars, just like they look for Paul George. They yeah. look for Lowry Markkinen. They've got picks to trade. They're not dead yet, but it's going to take one home run like lightning strike to get back toward the top and if they don't do it that's fine there's a good honor in being a one team legend on good teams for the rest of Steph's career right Path forward look like now that Golden State has Steph locked into this contract well, well Malik I think the big question is is Steph Curry content on just competing to get into the play-in every year certainly what they what happened last year and, and then losing to Sacramento because I think right now in early September, when you look at the Western Conference, there's probably seven teams that are better than Golden State right now. And I think signing the extension eliminates the distraction, something that would have been asked upon in, uh, in training camp as far as extending for another year, certainly with the deadline coming up here. But I'm not convinced, and, and certainly I think they're similar to where the Lakers are. They're a team that's good. They're a 45 to 46 win team. But we're not ready to put them up there in the top four, top five, unless maybe we get Andrew Wiggins back from 2022. Maybe the sure. young players 
uh, Kaminga and Moody and, and Podzimski take a huge jump in development this summer. And we won't know that until this season starts. Well, Bobby, you can just come out here to L.A., sit in my seat and host the show because you just segued us perfectly because Steph, he was on his media tour out in New York. <laughs> it wasn't just the contract, Shanae, that he was asked about. We saw how fun it was, right? Steph and LeBron leading Team USA to gold in Paris. Well, since Bobby brought up the Lakers, Curry told People Magazine, quote, hopefully there will be more experiences in the future. And this is what raised people's antenna. Even if we're teammates or not. <laughs> Even if we are teammates or not, Bobby. So since the Olympics had everybody, <laughs> I mean, including us here on the show before our break, talking about if we could see this in the NBA, now it seems Steph is maybe leaving the door open with those comments. Should these two team up in the NBA before it's all said and done? And how could that actually happen? Yeah, I mean, look, LeBron James has a player option next year and, be and can become a free agent. You know, I'm, I'm not looking at it, well, how can they get him and how can they sign him? He's made over $500 million on, in his career and probably over a billion uh, career-wise, uh, you know, lifetime here. He could certainly opt out of his contract and go to Golden State and, and finish out his career for the next two years playing with Steph Curry and, and Draymond Green and Golden State wouldn't have to give up anybody. He can go flat out there and, and sign out right here. And certainly that would be intriguing here. I don't, I don't see it from a trade perspective here. And I think... That's going to be the interesting thing. If, if the Lakers are mediocre this year, will LeBron James force the issue to get out of, the Laker, out of Los Angeles next mm. offseason? See, to me, the big elephant in the room is how long will LeBron James want to play for? Because one thing I appreciate about both of these guys, Steph Curry and LeBron James, is no matter what you think about them, whatever else they accomplish, people believe that they're the best at what they do, the best shooter we've ever seen. And also, you know, whether you love LeBron or hate him, you believe something completely about him. So when you look at this dynamic, being teammates or not, I mean, is he speculating for the next Olympics or is he more talking about being teammates on the same squad? I don't know how long LeBron James will play for. Steph, again, you just said there's honor in maintaining one team. Like, can we see LeBron in a Golden State Warriors jer jersey? Mm. Can we see Steph in a Lakers jersey? Even though, I don't know if it was like the real internet that came up. Did you? <laughs> did Steph? Did, did Steph post himself with like, oh, I don't look bad with the, the Lakers? The real internet. I don't know if that was a real the, internet. Like, we're, I don't believe the, everything, the, the but I saw a picture sleeping, of him in a Lakers jersey, and he's like, that doesn't internet. look bad. Well, it, I feel like if we were going to see it happen, particularly the reporting around the last sort of trade deadline, Adrian Wojnarowski saying that maybe there was interest here that these two teams had at least had some some early contact. That's when we would have seen but it. But LeBron's on side quest notions right now. I think it was his dog <laughs> that said it. Like he's a comp so much he's even accomplished playing with his own son yeah like what else is and out that's there? what's tough to walk away from too Zach what do you think about this well, first of all, the Steph LeBron pick and roll in the Olympics or the LeBron Steph pick and roll, flip it around, it was awesome. We might see it again in an all-star game in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure this is a realistic scenario in the NBA. LeBron's about to be 40. Like, how long is this going to continue to go on? This is not something we can speculate about happening three years from now. And yeah, he could go join the Warriors for the minimum if that's all he cared about. But A... I think there was some trepidation, at least around LeBron, last year when the Warriors knocked on the door at the trade deadline about, do we really want to change teams again? Do we really want to chase a ring in another place again? Or has LeBron accomplished all that needs to be accomplished to cement his legacy? I think he wants to stay a Laker. But if that were to change and all he wanted to do was win, all he cared about was winning, there'd be situations better than Golden State to sign for the minimum. Why sure. not sign with the Thunder for the minimum? Why not sign with the Sixers for the minimum? Minimum. So it's nice to dream, and I will keep dreaming about that pick and roll that got Team USA <laughs> over the finish line, that got Team USA past Wemby before Wemby leveled up at the end of the Olympics. So I'll keep dreaming, I guess. <laughs> Warriors pursuing ex Lakers forward feels like a major waste of time. The Golden State Warriors continue to bring in a variety of free agents for workouts this offseason, and now it reportedly includes former first round pick Troy Brown Jr. Kendra Andrews of ESPN reported on Wednesday that Brown is set to work out for the Warriors this week. This follows reports of the team's interest in 6 feet 10 inches sharpshooter Davis Bertans and Brazilian Olympic standout Bruno Caboclo, who recently trained with Golden State before signing a contract overseas in Israel. Troy Brown Jr. faces an uphill battle to secure a spot with the Golden State Warriors amidst a crowded roster. While players like Bertans, and previously Caboclo, make sense for the Warriors, 
given their need for more offensive punch in the frontcourt, Brown's potential fit raises eyebrows, considering the depth the Warriors already have at the wing position. Standing at 6 feet 6 inches, Brown brings 6 years and 356 games of NBA experience, having been drafted 15th overall by the Washington Wizards in 2018. His best season came in his sophomore year, where he averaged 10.4 points, 5.6 rebounds, 2.6 assists, and 1.2 steals over 25.8 minutes per game. More recently, Brown is known for his one-year stint with the Los Angeles Lakers during the 2022-23 season, where he made 45 starts and averaged 24.5 minutes per game. He contributed 7.1 points and 4.1 rebounds while hitting 38.1% of his three-point attempts on 3.7 shots per game. Last season, Brown saw limited action in 59 games split between the Minnesota Timberwolves and Detroit Pistons, where his minutes dipped to an average of just 14 per game. Now, as a free agent, Golden State is emerging as a potential destination. However, adding Brown to the roster would only further complicate an already crowded rotation at the wing positions. With players like Brandon Podziemski, Andrew Wiggins, DeAnthony Melton, Buddy Heald, Moses Moody, Gary Payton II, Lindy Waters III, Gouet Santos, and Daquan Plowden, the Warriors are not lacking in wing options. This abundance of talent at the two-guard and small forward spots is already creating potential rotation headaches for head coach Steve Kerr. If the Warriors' front office is serious about adding another player this offseason, or perhaps making a trade before training camp, priority should be given to shoring up the power forward and center positions. Alternatively, they could look to add more point guard depth behind Stephen Curry, Podziemski, and two-way signee Rhys Beekman. It's hard to imagine the Warriors being genuinely committed to signing Brown, making this workout feel like a massive waste of time for both the player and the franchise.